right, you're the one that set off that stomper. I like it. It's good. Okay, so you guys are going to love our next guest. He is the former engineer turned entrepreneur and now former entrepreneur turned video producer. He is a storyteller that has filmed over 400 entrepreneurs and founded an amazing company called LG Pictures. So please put your hands together for Lynn Graft. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming Thank out. You. Long horns. What's up? Peace, peace. Okay. So, t-shirts and duffel bags. I don't even remember why I wrote that. What's, why is that my first question to you? When I started my first company, it was a Monday night. I was working on my business plan. There was this event in Austin, Texas, where they typically have a Lumineer come and they talk about their startup experience. And I got there late, didn't know who it was, but it was always a great speaker once a month that they had. So I walk in and this fairly short individual, kind of balding, and had a duffel bag and t-shirts, and he starts going off telling this story. And he pulls up the first t-shirt and he goes, this, and he's kind of a nerd, small. He goes, this, this company, great idea. We never could get the, we could never get the technology to work and it failed. Okay. Pulls out another t-shirt, great idea. We got it to work, nobody cared. <laughs> Couldn't make a product. Okay. Drops that down, third t-shirt, great idea, great, great product. People would buy for it, but we couldn't make it cheap enough. So he drops uh. that down, gets to the sixth t-shirt and he goes, oh man, this one finally, we got a product that worked a market that worked, we raised $20 million, and we still failed as a company. And I'm like, who is this guy? And who keeps giving this guy money to do this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he pulls out the last shirt, and he didn't show it around. And I, Brian, I don't know who this guy is. And he goes, this company, great idea, great product, great team, perfect timing within the market. And the people that just funded us, that we lost their $20 million, they backed this company. Turns around, and it's AOL. It's uh, Mark Seraph, one of the three founders of AOL. Ever since I saw that story with my first startup, I've been enamored by the stories of entrepreneurs and trying to capture that and share it with others. It is fascinating. So do you feel like you've, could you figure out if a company has the right fit for something? Are you, know, you there I, yet? Uh, no, I, well, I, the one of the things that I've noticed that I can definitely say no matter what, there isn't one way to do anything. Gotcha. It doesn't matter what right, industry, right, right. what space, the, 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 there's di diametrically opposed ways to approach things and people are just as successful. Okay, okay. so entrepreneurs are very common here in downtown Las Vegas. We've got about 60 small businesses, about 70 tech investments. And so a bunch in from here. The, yeah, Crazy. probably a lot of them there. So um, when, when you're talking about these people that are kind of in this sub $500,000 kind of realm, like how should an entrepreneur craft a story that could help them? There's a couple things you really need to do. And first, what you're trying to accomplish is to make an emotional connection with whoever your audience be. Be it that a, an investor, a customer, someone to get uh, sign a lease for you. You want to have what if some it's these connections. Guys? If it's these guys over here, I want to entertain you. I want to make sure that oh, you yeah. are paying attention. A lot you guys entertained? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. So I want to find a way to relate to you all as an audience. And I want to speak of something. So there's a lot okay. of people that I film that are exceptional at that, is to find that emotional connection, something that will relate to you. And I'll give you an example, uh, uh, Carly Roney. Okay. Carly Roney is the founder of The Knot. And the way that she makes an emotional connection with women is that she goes back and tells the story of when she founded The Knot. And it stems from her wedding experience. She had a mixed race marriage in the 80s in New York City without a whole lot of money in a certain area of town. And back then there was only bride magazines. And she relates it was the worst day of her life. It was oh, a complete catastrophe, to be the wedding worst nightmare. Yeah. Um, and it rained, it was, everyone was sweating, it was really terrible. But she decided to create the knot, and the, every time she tells the story of the knot to women specifically, she goes, I created the knot so that you, as a future bride-to-be, never have to go through what I experienced. So any woman that wants to get married, that's an, an immediate connection because for a lot of women, it's one of the most important days of their life. So you find ways to make that emotional connection. So if you can find, as an entrepreneur, whether you're technology or non-tech, Find a way to connect with your audience, and that's one of the critical things to do. That's really interesting. Okay, so find champions. That's kind of what you're talking about, right? Like finding the people that you're going to help in the future, and then speaking from the heart, like being vulnerable, I guess, is the best way to think about that, or yeah, at least finding me, something that's honest. Let me take the, the latter one first. Um, I went through a, a leadership class in Austin, Texas, that, where I met one of my mentors, and she was really good at being able to connect with the audience. And she gave us an example of how you do that. So she gets up and she talks to the crowd in a normal way that a lot of people do. She goes, well, I have an idea. It's for a rape crisis center in Austin, Texas. It's to help women that are in danger with their spouse or boyfriend, whatever it might be. 
So that's how she said it the first time. Then she says, now I want to show you how, if you want to speak authentically from the heart and be vulnerable, she goes back and she thinks of someone in her life, and she, she kind of has a moment of silence. She goes, I think of someone in my life, my sister, my mother, uh, maybe my daughter, and I think about them being beaten and having no place to go. She, she goes to that place where it's very personal to her. So the next time she says it, it's all, you can see the, oh, like emotions, the emotions in are like her kind of eyes. Encapsulated and and in on the story, camera, yeah. one of the things I'm trying to do as a producer, director, I'm trying to make that connection as well. And my job is to elicit questions from you that get you to get your eyes to glisten. Yeah. Whether you're crying or smiling or happy, that energy. Um, and that's what you're able to do. When you tap inside of that emotional connection that you have with your own story, it shows in your posture, it shows in your eyes, it shows mm. in how you present yourself. That's one of the most important things you need wow. to do as an entrepreneur. If I got drunk enough, the audience member would feel a little drunk? Yes. It, it, you make people do shots to get <laughs> yes. them there, whatever to <laughs> get them great. over that hump. Shots help in that regard. All right. That's how I'm crafting my story. All right. <laughs> so tell me about, um, uh, tell me about do, you, do you love honking at cows when you pass them? So before, at, when I was an engineer, <laughs> I knew that I wasn't going to be an engineer for, for a sure. long period of time. I decided to go teach skiing okay. and look at grad school. So as I was cruising the country, examining grad schools, um, I was in my car. I ended up living in my car for two years and I taught at two oh, different geez, resorts, really? living in, in okay. Tahoe and in Colorado at Breckenridge and, and Heavenly and taught and had a great time. And one of my favorite things to do is you're stuck in the car four or five, six hour road trips as you'll be driving 60, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> and cows, they have this crazy thing that they do. It's not- oh, Cows are crazy. Well, I know, they're, I know where they're, you're they're, going. So if you're driving 60 miles an hour and you're right here, the cow's right there. By the, when you honk, the sound comes from here. The cow looks, by the time the cow looks his head up, they're, they're doing like this. <laughs> right, they're chewing their cut and they're yeah. looking where the sound was instead of where you're at. And, and <laughs> I just find that kind of fascinating and keeps me. <laughs> oh, that, that was the whole point for right hours. there. I mean, this keeps me awake. It's like tapping the wrong side of someone's shoulder. Right? Yeah, and it's like, like that thing's, <laughs> you were that kid, and yeah, now it's moved so on to cows. In, in like, Texas, that's, that's a little bit different. That's more like cow tipping, okay? okay. <laughs> Which is a good sport, too. That is awesome. Okay, so uh, tell me about this story in high school where you, or in college when you got everybody drunk on caffeine because they banned your frat from alcohol? No, or but, nobody well, could have alcohol. This is when I learned kind of my creativity when it comes to storytelling or creating events that oh, are gotcha. different and unique. Related to a good um, story. And I yeah. still try to do things like this today. So what happened was I became rush chairman for our fraternity, and our fraternity that particular semester went dry. Not, okay. I mean, the campus went dry. No more alcohol in these rush things. So yeah. as a fraternity, you're like, what the hell are we going to do? Like, where recruitment's going to go down. So, yeah. so I'm trying to brainstorm and think what we could do. Obviously, we'd bring women to attract the guys over there, but we need something else. And that particular time, the cola, Jolt cola, it was twice the caffeine, twice the sugar came out. Jolt, yeah. yeah. And Who knows Jolt? Boy, Steve Jolt? said it? Oh, we got some old guys. Nice. Yeah. Old okay. school. Two, two cans, five o'clock in the afternoon, can't be up until three o'clock in yeah. the afternoon. <laughs> they were a decade too early before the energy drinks. Gotcha. You know, okay. They were doing the same exact thing. So we ended up, I called Jolt up and I said, hey, we've got this party, we can't serve alcohol, can we have Jolt? And they brought like this full semi full, as much Jolt as we had. We had Jolt for the entire semester. Okay. And it was incredibly successful. We had 100% recruitment that semester from that one particular party because the party was amazing. Everyone was just going 100 miles an hour, bouncing off the walls. Very successful along Whoa. those creativities along those Were they still drinking? I mean, you, no, is, it, is this like a beer bong, but beer bong with Jolt? Or do you just, did, we, no, did we have no, the we had, we had those little Dixie cup shots. You know, okay. make the jello shots thing. So, we just okay. passed, so people were doing shots all night long. Do shots of you Red Bull. You are so lucky like you didn't get a heart attack. <laughs> that is so cool. All right. Um, so last question is just give me a story. Like you've been, you know, you filmed over 400 of these entrepreneurs. Um, you've been in this kind of boat yourself. Like what is the story that is the best story? Like what, when it comes to you thinking back to all these experiences, what's somebody who did an exceptional job crafting a story? For me, there's no question where um, I had an opportunity. I had been doing a bunch of videos for a couple of years and I got a big project with Microsoft. It was kind of my first major project and that led uh, my business partner now, Ingrid Vanderbilt, she's the former uh, entrepreneur residence for Dell. She had approached the network CNBC and we crafted the show called American Made. And we ended up landing the show with CNBC. And it was the first primetime series at night. And 
when we got the show, we were like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, and they're like, oh, yeah. shit, we got to make this thing happen. <laughs> and one of the most challenging things to do in a brand new show on a fledgling network, and CNBC was kind of fledgling at the time, is to try and get these big name entrepreneurs to go on this network because they want audience and reach and they don't want to be embarrassed. They want it to be a good long show and we we're going to do this hour show. And luck would have it, we ended up securing Howard Schultz from founder of Starbucks. Okay. And that was a big win. Yeah, big yeah, yeah, win, yeah. Big win. Great entrepreneur. And his, uh, they have handlers that control how much time that they get to mm. spend with the interviewers, the press. And she goes, so you're going to get 30 minutes one day and 35 minutes another day. One's going to be at the headquarters, one's going to be at this coffee, urban coffee shop downtown because we want to highlight what we're doing in the urban space. And I was like, holy crap, we're going to make an hour-long episode off two half-hour half hour interviews? Right. It's really, really <laughs> hard to do. But we did the first one. It went really well. And then they, gave us, they allowed us to film the shareholders meeting. And in the shareholders meeting, he talked about this story that over the holidays, his, his wife's father had invited him and his wife, and she was pregnant at the time, over them for Thanksgiving. Okay. So, they show up to the house, and his wife is the breadwinner in the family, and she's pregnant. He's not making any money. He's starting Starbucks, and they're going there for the holidays. Right, right, right. And so they're hanging out, doing their own thing and that thing, and he says, Howard, let's take a walk. So the father-in-law asks you to go take a walk, and Howard's like, oh, crap, yeah, what's going to happen? Trouble. So he goes to this walk, and he says, you know, I respect what you're trying to do, and that's, that's honorable, but you need to quit that stupid like, entrepreneurial thing. Make some money for my daughter. Yeah, yeah. quit that entrepreneurial right. thing and take care of my daughter. You know, and, and to abbreviate the story, he basically says, you know, I didn't, I stayed the course and we're, we are where we are today. It's like a 10,000% return on their stock from when that particular time he was talking to the shareholders. And he had shared that story on stage to the shareholders. And he's talking about this to Ingrid in the interview with the coffee shop for the show that we're doing. And he, and he shared on camera that um, he went and cried after that. Yeah. And as a producer director, of a primetime television show, and you get the founder of Starbucks to say that he cried, that's a really good right. thing. Right, <laughs> you get the emotional push, yeah, you, got the you emotional know what he pain. went through, yeah. He, he, he shared a, an experience that was really tough for him because he showed, it was just so difficult for him to deal with that, and then share that with his shareholders, even after all that success. And one of the things he said after the fact is, sometimes the difference between winning and losing is this gray area of perseverance. Mm -hmm. And that's just that golden nugget that you want on every show. It was just this brilliant capture of success. That is amazing. And to me, it, he is the epitome of one of the best storytellers I've ever been around. And every, I could listen to that story 10 times. He, he, he looks Italian, and he's a good looking guy. And he's right, tall, he and he's got a great presence about him. He's probably got the he whole boardroom really staring at him. He's that's a good place. Cool. To, and a couple, I'll throw a couple. Watch Scott Harrison from Charity Water, another great storyteller. Gary Vaynerchuk uh, with Vaynerchuk Media. And uh, Howard Schultz. Good OK. Dude. No, I think it's an important part that a lot of entrepreneurs don't think about. So. Okay, so just to finalize this, we have uh, storytelling for entrepreneurs.com, and then that's what you have. I don't know if I'm going to get the camera in there, but you got this at the UN. Yes, this week cool. I got to go to the United Nations for an on, a group of 100 entrepreneurs that from impressive. around the world. I told you, I, I, I Googled your image and it, it showed something at the UN. I'm like, oh, it must be another one, you know, but that was you. That's impressive. Um, and then we also, people, if you guys want to follow him, you can go to Lynn Graff, L Y N, just one N G R A F F. FT. Uh, FT. FT, sorry. Skin Graff. Yeah, Graff. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> right, and uh, yeah, so check out storytellingforentrepreneurs.com and there's like an email set up there or something like that, so.